We will now use this new determinant to illustrate each one of these approaches a second time. Once again, we'll start with the Russian approach. I would like you to look at this matrix and visually identify the three positive patterns and the three negative patterns. Let me step out of the shot and help you point them out. The first positive pattern comes from the main diagonal itself, and so it's 3 times 3 times 1, 9. The second term comes from this triangle, with a side parallel to the main diagonal, right here. And this triangle will contribute 0. The final positive term comes from this triangle, which also has a base parallel to the main diagonal. And this term will contribute negative 1 times negative 1 times 1. So the contributions from the positive terms are 9 and 1. We're now on to the negative terms, which come from similar patterns that are related to the opposite diagonal. So once again, let me step out of the shot and help you point them out. The first negative term comes from the opposite diagonal itself, and so it contributes a negative 3. The next one comes from this triangle that has a side parallel to the opposite diagonal, and this term will contribute a negative 6. Minus 1 times minus 2 times 3 is 6, but once again these are negative terms. And the final one comes from this triangle that has a base parallel to the opposite diagonal. And this triangle will contribute 0 because there is a 0 in the mix. So the negative terms are negative, negative 3 and negative 6. And the result is 1. This determinant equals 1. So we did this rather slowly, but I think you can see how with a little bit of practice you can do this calculation very quickly. So one vote for the Russian approach. Now let's move on to the American approach. And of course it will produce the same four non-zero terms, but it will do with a little bit less of pattern recognition. However, you have to do more writing. You have to repeat the first two columns to the right of the matrix. In an alternative approach, you repeat the first two rows below the matrix. But let's stick with what we already considered once. Now, technically, I would next need to draw these six lines corresponding to the six terms. But that's a little bit too much. I think it's rather easy to visualize them. So let's do that. So here's the first positive term, and it's 9. Here's the second positive term, and it's 1. And here's the third positive term, and it's 0. So once again, 9 plus 1. Now on to the negative terms. And here is the first negative term. Some people like going down, so you would start with these numbers and go down and to the left. But let's go with what we described before and start on the bottom here and go up and to the right. So here is the first term, and it's 3, and so it contributes a minus 3. Here is the second, and it contributes a minus 6. And here is the last one that contributes 0 because of this 0 right here. So we have the exact same four terms. And the result is once again 1, except now there is no way, there is nowhere to write it. All right, so that's it for the Russian and the American approaches. And let's move on to the one that will prove best, the Indian approach. And while it's particularly effective here, is that there is a zero in the mix. And because there is a zero in the first column, we'll do something different from what we did in the original video, where we expanded this determinant along the first row. But here, to take advantage of this zero, we'll go along the first column. And everything else will be the same. Now, just a word of caution. It works the exact same way for the column as it does for the row, as long as you take the first column. But things would be different in both cases if you went with the second row or the second column. All the signs will flip. I don't want to go over these details right now, we'll save them until later when we're actually discussing row and column expansions. At which point I invite you to come back and do a second pass at the Indian approach for 3x3 matrices because you'll have greater knowledge and it will be more informed on your part. So we're going to go with a column expansion 
And we're only going to have two terms because the term corresponding to this entry is simply not there. It doesn't matter what the corresponding two by two determinant is. That would have come from these four entries because in the end it will multiply zero. So we'll skip that calculation altogether. And we're left with two terms. It will be three times a corresponding two by two determinant to be filled in in a moment and one. Now what are the corresponding determinants? For three, it's this determinant right here. I visually crossed out this column and this row and so I'm left with this two by two determinant and it's clearly three minus two. Three minus two and three minus two is one. And now on to this term. The corresponding two by two determinant is this one right here. Once again, I mentally crossed out this row and this column, so I'm left with this two by two determinant, which of course is one minus three or minus two. And it's clear, I didn't even need all this space, that the result is one. So this was by far the quickest, the simplest, and the most reliable way to calculate a three by three determinant, especially when there is a zero in the mix. So as far as I'm concerned, the Indian approach wins.